Uh, hi, teacher. Hi, Kelgin. Hi, Elvin. Yep. I'm waiting for the rest of the team to come in. Can you guys switch on your cameras and let me check how oh, yeah, you yeah. look? Sure. Uh, let me grab my grab my yeah, chance. Where close? Yeah, wear your decide wear your white shirt with your aprons. Yeah, I'm I'm also setting up my cooking space now. Mm, can you just switch on your camera so that we can tell you whether it looks clear or good or whatever? So, okay. Miss Justin, your laptop tilt. Yes, thank you. So, Miss Jacindra is going to be the MC for today. Say, Keldin is setting up his camera. Alvin, how about you? Still getting dressed? Misumi, are you in? Yep. Okay. Alvin? Not bad yet. Okay. So, Sumi, you basically, I want, I need you to pin and unpin. Oh, wait, no. Sumi does the recording and okay. playing. Of, uh, I think later we can start playing the promotional videos at about 4.50. So, about 10 minutes from now. You can start playing the promotional videos in a loop. And then um, I will screen share. Uh, wait, no, wait. For that, Sumi need to screen share because mm. it's your screen. So you play the video and then you screen share. Then after that, um, once people start coming in, we will start. Uh, Jess can maybe signal, signal the last few at 4.57 or 4.58, just at the end of the one video, Jess can basically start talking, saying that, welcome everybody, we're going to start in three minutes or we're going to start in one minute. Uh, everybody, please be patient and stuff like that. And then at exactly five o'clock, Sumi stop playing the video and then Jacindra, we will pin her and then you will say the introductory. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can we try to play the videos now? Yes, you may. Okay, let me so share. You play. Uh, make sure to uh later not allow participants to unmute themselves because yeah, well, it's gonna. I in the can you double check all the setting? But I think this is the setting by Edutech. So just double check all of this. All right. Uh, right. Thank thanks. you. I'm I'm going to go grab some more stuff and I'll come back soon. Okay. Inda, can you look into the system because I'm not hearing anything from my side. Oh, you can't hear. Cannot. Jacindra, can you hear anything? Ah uh, no, she can't. You're yeah, muted, yeah. Jess. Yeah, I unmuted already. Share sound. Okay, wait, let me do this again.
Okay. It makes homework submission easier. Also made uh, learning borderless. Even during right. the lockdown, a transition from physical to online was really smooth without okay. any hiccups. Oh, I, I think... I have... Right. So you played a few of these videos according to the list. Um, you choose which one. So you just play, 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 play. And then um, as agreed, 4.57-ish, Jacindra can start saying something. And then we play one more video. Then Jacindra talked again. And then by 5.00, as sharp as possible, then stop playing the video, stop sharing screen, and then come back to Jacindra. And Jacindra, could you pin yourself while you welcome yeah. all the guests and participants? Jacindra, keep an eye out. Uh, Sumi, you can stop sharing screen now. You can keep an eye out for all our principals and all the coordinators, yeah? You know who they are? Uh, yes. So if you see them in the participants list, um, remember to just give a welcome uh, note to them. Um, because I've, I shared this in the principal group, I shared this in the MYP group, I've shared this everywhere. So if people come, just acknowledge and welcome them lo, from the leaderships mm. of campuses, all five campuses. Can I? Okay, I think we can, let's double check, are we? In the, can you make all of us co-hosts? Let me try, Mr. You go to participant, you go to our names. There is three dots there. Can you make all of us co-hosts? Yes, I can. Thank you. All right. So you make Jacindra, you make Elvin, Kelgin, and Sumi co-hosts. Kelgin and... Alvin, you just need to focus on delivering your presentation. Everything else will be controlled by the rest of us here. Now, do not let in anybody until about 4.50. So in about eight more minutes, let's just check our systems. One, and Calgin is not even ready yet. Alvin, are you ready? Alvin, testing, testing, where are you? So Jasrinda, you do the pinning. After you you emceeing and pinning, I'm going to do record. I'm going to do sharing of screen, slide sharing. And Sumi is going to be doing the recording once she's done playing the videos. So this is you guys' slide. I need to remove this. I need to close everything that's in my background first. Too many I heard you call my name just now. Everything okay? Now, are you ready? Ah uh, yeah 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 I'm fine already. Mm -hmm. uh, everything set up good already. Uh yeah should be. Oh yeah I'm talking about chicken. Your chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Alvin are you okay? Done ready? Yes, I think so. <laughs> All right, so first one. Okay. Can you guys make sure that your handphones are switched um to silent mode so that it doesn't get picked up during um when you're talking and stuff? Oh uh, yeah, sure, sure. Mm. And then what else do we need? Um I think that's about it. So, uh, Miss Sumi is gonna play the video. Loop, 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 loop. Mr. Sindra is going to start talking at five immediately. Miss Sumi stop playing the video. Mr. Sindra stop start speaking. So me, the minute Jacindra starts to address the crowd, you press record and then you just continue recording and I will do the slide sharing. So boys, you just be as natural as you can. You were very good in your video recording yesterday. Okay. All right, sure. No. No problem. So chicken already in different different stages, huh? Tomato, uh, onion. I heard yesterday the tomato, the onion, the knife, everything. Yeah. Actually, actually, chicken is only in this stage, like uh marination uh, stage. Later I'm just gonna cook for uh, you to see how it's supposed to look like. 
So you have a cooked version already, yeah? Uh, yes, so dinner the tonight comes to you. Yeah, yeah, the cooked version <laughs> is right now heating up here. All right, I cooked it last night, basically. Yeah, it's it's here already. Just need to heat it up. <laughs> okay. Wait, I will um you have your teacher here. Give me one minute. Uh, sure. Okay, the team is all still in Subang Jaya campus, so we're all ready. So in four more minutes. So Kelvin, this is the last breakthrough talk. Elvin, after this, do you want to take over and do breakthrough talks? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it has been a great journey. Oh yeah, that's the thing. I want to make a request for Cynthia. After the breakthrough talk, yes. area, the final lines of the MC is done. Can I can I give like a like a farewell and like a thank you to my audience, teacher? Because I mean, this has been a great journey, a long. Uh, I mean, like something that meant a lot to me. So, mm -hmm. you started from podcasting one on one. So in your series. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, so your homeroom teacher is here. Ah, Mr. Navin, Mr. Navin. Ah, uh, hello, Mr. Navin. Yes, today this is my chef outfit. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Hey, all the best, Kelly. Yeah, all, all, all the best, Haven. All right, thank you, thank you. Okay. So, everyone, are we ready? Shall we let people in? I see Taruhiko there. She's been waiting there patiently since 4 30. I say what no. What time you tell her, Alvin? <laughs> She's not excited. Hi, Taruhiko. Ah, hello. 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 Yep. Okay. So we're just waiting for everybody. In a bit, we will um start. All Text right. the rest of your classmates. Invite them to come. Yeah, I, I listen to everyone. Your classmates. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, said, yeah, I also asked. I also caught most of them already. Hey, you didn't tell them my last breakthrough, Elvin's first breakthrough, and many more to come. Yeah. Okay. So, Sumi, ready? Yeah. Okay. So, we're going to start playing the promotional videos. Um, At this point, everybody can, like, camera off, mic off, but stand by, yeah? Wait right. for the cue from Mr. Syndra. Okay? Good luck, boys. All right. Thank you, DJ. Thank you, Miss. Beat makes homework submission easier. Also made uh, learning borderless. Even during the lockdown, a transition from physical to online was really smooth without any hiccups. Oh, I, I think app, uh, this uh, Beep is a good uh, app. It brings everything, you know, uh, all in one. It's uh, uh, learning together and uh, it's very useful, you know, to the kids. Especially, you know, I can see from uh, Krista, uh, she's really useful, you know, uh, using it and uh, especially, you know, 
Every time you come back home, then she will, you know, go into the peace lesson, and then it will really help her, you know, to encourage. The younger one uh, still, you know, new to the, <laughs> so uh, it, it takes a while, you know. But I can see the improvement from her as well. Beat makes homework submission easier, also made uh, learning borderless. Even during the lockdown, a transition from physical to online was really smooth without any hiccups. Oh, I, I think app, uh, this uh, Beep is a good uh, app. It brings everything, you know, uh, all in one, it's uh, uh, learning together and uh, it's very useful, you know, to the kids. Especially, you know, I can see from uh, Krista, uh, she really useful it, you know, uh, using it, and uh, especially, you know, every time she come back home, then she will, you know, go into the peace lesson, and then it will really help her, you know, to encourage. The younger one uh, still, you know, new to the. Virtual learning is designed by our IB teachers using flipped learning pedagogy, which replaces dull lectures with exciting discussions. Our learning management platform, BEAD, is certified for pedagogical quality by Education Alliance Finland. At Fairview, learning is supercharged by digital tools. Despite the uncertainties ahead, learning continues at Fairview on campus and online. Everyone, everywhere can learn. Without boundaries, you have a teacher with you 24-7. Listen and watch. Learning on demand. Virtual learning is designed by our IB teachers using flipped learning pedagogy, which replaces dull lectures with exciting discussions. 
Our learning management platform, BEAD, is certified for pedagogical quality by Education Alliance Finland. At Fairview, learning is supercharged by digital tools. Despite the uncertainties ahead, learning continues at Fairview, on campus and online. Everyone, everywhere can learn. Without boundaries, you have a teacher with you 24-7. Listen and watch. Learning on demand. Virtual learning is designed by our IB teachers using flipped learning pedagogy, which replaces dull lectures with exciting discussions. Our learning management platform, BEAD, is certified for pedagogical quality by Education Alliance Finland. At Fairview, Virtual learning is designed by our IB teachers using flipped learning pedagogy, which replaces dull lectures with exciting discussions. Our learning management platform, BEAD, is certified for pedagogical quality by Education Alliance Finland. At Fairview, learning is supercharged by digital tools. Despite the uncertainties ahead, learning continues at Fairview on campus and online. Everyone, everywhere can learn. Without boundaries, you have a teacher with you 24-7. Listen and watch. Learning on demand. BEAT makes homework submission easier. Also made uh, learning borderless. Even during the lockdown, a transition from physical to online was really smooth without any hiccups. Oh, I, I think app, uh, this uh, beep is a good uh, app. It bring everything you know, you know all in one. It's uh, uh, learning together, and uh, it's very useful you know to the kids. Especially you know, I can see from uh, Krista, uh, she really useful it you know uh, using it, and uh, especially you know. Every time she come back home, then she will, you know, go into the P lesson, and then it will really help her, you know, to encourage. The younger one are uh, still, you know, new to the, <laughs> so uh, it, it takes a while, you know. But I can see the improvement from her as well. Virtual learning is designed by our IB teachers using flipped learning pedagogy, which replaces dull lectures with exciting discussions. Our learning management platform, BEAD, is certified.
for Pedagogical Quality by Education Alliance Finland. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Breakthrough Series. We are honored to have you here. My name is Ms. Jasindra, Assistant PYP Coordinator at Gary International School, Subhanjaya. I will be your MC for today's event. Together with me, we have Ms. Cynthia, our SJMYP Coordinator and Acting Campus Head. We would like to welcome other family campus leaders as well too. Today's talk is brought to you by Fairy International School under, under our Breakthrough Series. Before we begin, I would like to explain about our meeting ethics. First, we join the meeting. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us. Secondly, please mute your microphone to eliminate background noises, electronic alerts, and other irritants. Thirdly, please pay attention to the presenters. Next, should you have any questions, please type them in the chat box and our team will address them. Lastly, when your name is called, you are welcome to unmute and begin sharing. We would like to thank each and every one of you for joining us today, following and observing the meeting ethics. For your information, this session is going live on YouTube right now. So special shout out to the YouTube viewers. We hope this would give you a great breakthrough experience. Thank you so much for joining us in today's session. We are proud to feature our young researchers of Fairway International School who are courageously stepping forward to share their research. Today, sharing on Cooking 101. Please join me to welcome our presenters, Alvin Lin and Lin Kalji. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, parents, principal, coordinators, and teacher. Uh, welcome to Fairview's Breakthrough Talk. My name is Alvin, a student from Fairview International School, Penang Campus. And I am to be fair a person who really loves to eat and enjoy cooking. And I have to learn cooking because of the need to be independent. <laughs> and I learned cooking and recipes from online videos and website and has been doing so far for around eight years. Now, as a student, the skills of cooking has been an important part of my life. It not just allowed me to be able to make the dishes, which I really like and enjoy, but it has allowed me to try out new interesting dishes as well. Most importantly, cooking has been a way for me to bond with families and friends, as it enables me to make their favorite dishes and, have, and enjoy your time eating with them. Furthermore, I believe cooking is important to everyone too. Without the skills of cooking, College students wouldn't be able to make food for themselves, while we would be eating plain boring food that may not be even safe to consume. Restaurants would have never been existed as well, leaving your plate unsatisfied. So as you can see, the skills of cooking is truly important in everyday life. So let's now explore this interesting topic. Now, before I get into anything, how would you describe or define cooking? What is cooking? Please do type your answers in the chat. Well, any answers, uh, Elwin? Um, okay. Uh, well, I actually also had the same question. So I went up to online Oxford Dictionary for some answers. According to it, cooking is defined as the practice or skill of preparing food by combining, mixing, and heating ingredients. So in simple terms, cooking is the art of putting different food ingredients together, heating them over a fire, and making something brand new. This goes to show that cooking is more than just about making a dish but rather it is more about creativity and innovation in food, where we experiment with different flavors and materials to produce even greater results that satisfy our beliefs. This is why some chefs, especially shallow British chefs like Gordon Ramsay, Jamie Oliver, Marco Pierre White, and so on, always aim to produce new and stunning innovation dishes so that they could exercise their creative talents in cooking and gain the recognition they desire. 
right before I get into anything related to cooking, I think uh, it is important that we understand how cooking became the art form that it is today, so that we could get a complete picture of the topic. So without further ado, let's, uh, let us dive into the history of cooking. If you are ready, please do give a big thumbs up. Wow, okay, I see everyone is ready. Yep, I can see that too. Well, good luck teaching them history, Alvin. Thanks, man. Let's go. Time to be a historian. First of all, the discovery of fire is definitely the most important discovery in all human history. Some evidence of microscopic wood ashes suggested that Homo erectus, a member of the Homo genus and an ancestor to the modern day human species, were the first one to obtain control over fire while there's also evidence to show that control over fire was actually first harnessed by the even older members of the genus Homo in around 1.7 to 2 million years ago. The discovery of fire allowed humanity to have a source of warmth and lighting, a way to protect themselves from predators and create more advanced hunting too. But most importantly, it provides us with a method for cooking. At the daughter of Jacob Bridge in Israel, archaeologists found what seemed to be the earliest evidence for cooking with fire and it dates back to around 780,000 years ago. But other studies suggested that cooking actually started 1.8 billion years ago. The truth is that we don't really know when exactly fire was truly discovered and when it is first used to cook. Since the discovery predates record history, but what we know is that once human harnesses the power of fire and start to cook with it, Many interesting dishes soon started to pop up, which bring us to our next slide. Once fire was discovered, humanity started to experiment and create many different types of food. One of them is Anfu Han, which is a Chinese food that originates from the Qing Dynasty of China that lasted from 221 BCE to 206 BCE. This food was first made in the town of Anfu, which is located in the Jiangxi province, and it is basically a dried curled ham. To make this food, people will bury a whole leg of pork in salt to dry and cure it, and then smoke it, causing it to become red with a yellowish tint. This will give the meat a smoky and salty flavor that many people like, and it can be eaten on its own or be used in other dishes to add additional flavor. Another ancient recipe originates from the ancient Greeks in the 5th century BCE, and is called garum. The name is thought to have been delivered from Garos, which is a small but unknown species of fish which the Greeks used to make this savory condiment that is basically fermented fish sauce. Besides from just ancient Greek cuisines, this sauce was also later widely eaten and used in ancient Phoenician and Roman cuisine. Back then in Rome, the job of making garum was a task for the slave and laborers, where they would throw fish guts, bones, and other undesired parts of a fish into stone tanks or large clay pots, and then cover them in a breed solution of salt and seawater. They would then allow it to ferment under the sun for about a year, which will almost solid into a thick liquid leading to garum. So would anyone uh, have the courage to try fermented fish gut sauce? If you are, please type yes in the chat or please give a big thumbs up again. Uh, I mean, wow, your friend Teru immediately said yes without, without any hesitation. <laughs> Very courageous, Teru. Wow, all of you are courageous. Kaljin, how about you? Would you ever try the garum sauce? Well, I, I mean, I guess I will, but like, although I hope I can withstand the smell though. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Same here, same here. All right, let's move on. Penis quadratus is an ancient whole wheat sourdough bread that originates in Pompeii around 2,000 years ago. Preserved with the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 CE, the recipe involves combining dry ingredients like flour and salt with wet ingredients like water, kneading the mixture to form dough, and baking at 242 degrees Celsius for approximately 45 minutes. The addition of seeds such as sesame, nigria, anise, and poppy seed, along with honey, gives the bread a unique flavor. Moving on to papatsu, is a dish from ancient Mayan cuisine dating back to the Mayan civilization that existed from 1800 BCE until the 1697. Originating in the UK, Yucatan Peninsula of modern-day Mexico, papazu consists of corn tortillas dipped in pumpkin seed sauce, 
stuffed with hot boiled eggs and topped with a cooked tomato paper, pepper sauce. This dish continues to be enjoyed by locals in the Yucatan region today. Moving on, the oldest evidence of the existence of restaurant is found in an ancient Egyptian record that dates back to 512 BCE, where it mentioned an establishment that is similar to modern day restaurant. However, it only served one dish, which is a plate of cereal, wild folk, and onions. Then fast forward to the year 1725, where a Frenchman named Jean Botin and his wife founded the restaurant Sajar Botin in Madrid, Spain. When Botin died in 1753, his nephew, who was named Cadiero Remis, took over the establishment and renamed it into Sabrino de Botin, where it still stands till this day. And just for a fun fact, Sabrino is Spanish for nephew. According to Genius World Record, this restaurant is the oldest restaurant in the world in continuous operation, making it 298 years old. The restaurant specialized in Spanish cuisine, featuring dishes like Coniso Asado, a Spanish roast suckling pig from Castile. The piglet is seasoned with salt and pepper, coated in lard for crispy skin, and roasted at a 190 degrees Celsius for 130 minutes. Another signature dish is sopa de ajo, Spanish garlic soup. Garlic and bread are sauteed in olive oil, chicken stock is added, and the mixture is seamless. Risk egg are poured in to create ribs, and the soup can be seasoned with pepper or smoked paprika for additional flavor. Also, one very cool fact about this restaurant is that it doesn't only serve traditional recipe, but the oven in a building has an internal flame that has never been extinguished before. So if you've ever been in Spain, do head over to this restaurant to try it out. And this message is not sponsored, by the way. Wow. I mean, that restaurant is basically older than three generations of my family combined. <laughs> I know, right? I hope they don't have any ancient skeleton down in their basement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, imagine if they did. That would be so creepy. Okay, moving on. We shall now go a bit into culinary arts. Culinary arts refers to the food preparation, cooking, and the presentation of food. Much of the study in this field was organized by jean Anthony Brion Savahan, who is a French lawyer and a politician who is celebrated for his many writings on the craft and science of cookery and the art of eating. His most famous book is The Physiology de Gio, or Physiology of Taste, which was published in December 1825, two months before he passed away. However, there were no institution that actually thought this field at the time. As such, many wannabe chefs became apprentices for chefs that were working in inns and hotels in order to learn. That was until the first cooking school was finally established in the state of Massachusetts of the United States of America. This school was established in the 1879 and it is called the Boston Cooking School. In 1902, the Boston Cooking School was incorporated into Boston Siemens University, where it continues to teach young cooks even in the 21st century. It is truly an amazing story. All right, then, we have the food laws. Whenever you are cooking or eating someone's food craft, you rarely have to worry about the cleanliness, safeness, and quality of the food you are cooking or consuming due to food laws. But what actually is food loss? Anyone have any idea? Please do type your answers in the chat. Okay, Uzziah says, yeah, it is uh, why food tasters don't have jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, okay. that is very true. Yes, before food loss, uh, you know, kings and queens had food testers to test if they are uh, poison in the food. Very true. Uh, wow. You yeah, you, you said law that protects consumers. Wow, you're so that, smart, you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is, yeah, that that is. Uh, basically, that's basically right. That's basically yeah. right. Uh, Teru also well, said to maintain the cleanliness of the food. That is also correct. Mm, that is also right. Yeah. Okay, so well, they are basically the registration that regulates the production, trade, and handling of food. Ensuring what we put into our mouth is at least safe to eat. These days, almost every country has food laws and we all take them pretty much for granted. But did you know that food laws actually only appears quite recently in human history? It is widely believed that the first official food law ever was from King John of England. 
where he proclaimed the Aziz of Bread Laws of 1202, which prohibited the adulteration of bread with ingredients such as ground peas and beans. By the way, adulteration basically means the action of making something poorer in quality by the addition of another substances. So basically, this law ensured that England's bread has some form of quality control to it, making sure that each England's baker's bread is decent to purchase and eat without the need to worry of quality. Moving on to 1906, the United States marks a significant milestone in food regulation with the passage of Pure Food and Drugs Act by Congress. Signed into laws and enforced by President Theodore Roosevelt, the act aimed to enhance food safety by prohibiting the manufacture, sale, or transportation of adulterated, misbranded, poisonous, or deleterious food, liquors, drug, and medicine across state lines or from foreign sources. These laws laid the groundwork for the country's first consumer protection agency, known as today as the FDA. Ah, yeah, yeah. This, uh, this reminds me of one of that show's uh, character's name, right? Uh, what, what was it again? Uh? Uh, Hank. Hank, was it? Yeah, his name. Kao Jean, he's from the DEA, not the FDA. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, my bad, my bad. Uh, but that's a, a Breaking Bad reference, by the way, for anyone of you here who knows that show. <laughs> yeah, I know Kao Jean. Anyway, later, the Codex Elementaris was created and established as a collection of international standards, guidelines, and codes of practice, such to protect customers' health and ensure fair practices in food trade. These standards recognize globally harmonized food safety regulation and are considered the international reference for food safety. Formed in 1963 by the Food and Agriculture Organization and the World Health Organization, the context is adopted by 188 countries, including Malaysia. And that's why today we don't need to worry about ingesting poison when you're eating your favorite Lamli burger. In the present days, Cooking has evolved with advanced technology, moving from simple fires to electric stove, ovens, microwave, smokers, and more. The diversity of recipes have expanded globally, allowing for a blending of cultural cuisines. Access to restaurants and culinary education has never been easier before, with various dining options from fast food to fine dining and an abundance of culinary school. The internet provides a wealth of resources for learning professional cooking at home, just like me. Notably, food safety has greatly improved with stringent regulations, replacing past concerns such as toxic ingredients like borax. Today, people can cook and enjoy food with greater convenience, variety, and safety. Basically, the world of cooking has transformed greatly and has essentially become a new world for us to explore. So, are you excited, everyone? All right, then let's move on to the next slide where we shall now give you a cooking demo presented by Lim Kaojin. All right, hey, oh, hi everybody. Okay, uh, I can see some familiar faces here and of course some new faces from Penang. But in any case, hello everybody. My name is Lim Kaojin, a student from Fairview International School, Subang Jaya campus. And let me tell you this, I am a really big foodie who loves to try out new dishes and eat, okay? Which is why I have spent the good six past six years learning how to cook, uh, mostly from my grandma, okay, who I love a lot. <laughs> yeah, most of my dishes are from my grandma. Anyways, some of you here may know me as the podcast guy from an old Breakthrough Talk, or maybe as the animation history guy from another Breakthrough Talk, or maybe as the music theory guy from the most recent Breakthrough Talk. <laughs> hint, hint, you know, uh, Jenny is here, so yeah. <laughs> All right, but in any case, it is once again great to be back, and believe me, I do have a great deal to share again. So today, there are not much slides for me because uh, what we're going to do today is actually I'm going to give you a cooking demo. All right. So we are not going to look into slides. Okay. But we are just, I'm going to perform the cooking for you. Okay. So cooking. Let me set up my camera. Okay. Okay. There you go. Five. First of all, I would like to introduce you to my first friend in the kitchen. This wooden slab of box block right here. This is what we call a cutting block, all right? A cutting block. Uh, this, I like my cutting board to be wooden, okay? And make sure it is thick as well. Why? Um, 
Well, a cutting board is very important because it's basically the safe surface for you to cut your foods, all right? You do not want to be cutting your foods on this beautiful countertop here because you will scratch it, okay? A cutting board, this cutting board will also last you a lifetime, right? That's why I also don't like to buy plastic cutting boards because, well, plastic is prone to more scratches, okay? So, and as for the wooden cutting board, as long as you um, clean it well, okay, make sure you dry it well every time, yeah, it should, life, it should last you a lifetime, okay? You will not have to spend any, uh, any more money on more cutting boards. So that's why I like this one. Okay, next. Elwin, can you tell me what is this? Uh, That looks like a pen to me. A pen? Yeah, I don't I don't think this is a pen, Um, but uh, this in the kitchen, this is what we call a knife, Elwin, all right? So I have on, online and my friends, I have seen a lot of my friends hold a knife before, and I must say, it's usually wrong, <laughs> okay? Okay, first of all, I've seen a lot of people hold their knives like this. Uh, yeah, that's 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 the there. That's that's wrong. That there, okay. That's that is wrong. Because first of all, um, you cannot really exert much force uh, when cutting when you're doing it in this uh, when you're holding a knife like this. Okay. Now, secondly, uh, I have seen a lot of people hold a knife like this, right? Like this. This again is also wrong because well, too many fingers are near the sharp edge of the blade. Okay, and you risk cutting your fingers through this method. So what is the correct way to actually hold a knife? Well, very easy, let me teach you. Okay, your thumb right here and your index finger, okay, pinchy pinchy. You pinch the edge of the knife like so, and the rest of your three fingers rest behind the handle. There you go, this is how you properly hold a knife. That's it, and you can exert enough force and you don't have to worry about cutting your fingers like so, okay, very easy. There you go, okay. So now we learn how to we learn how to hold a knife. We learn how to use the cutting board. Now let's get into the first step of my recipe. So for those today, all right. So today I'm going to teach you how to cook one of my most favorite dishes. Okay, and the person who taught me how to cook this dish is of course my beloved grandma. Uh, I called it the popo chicken. Okay, so what is popo chicken? Popo chicken is basically some sort of uh, chicken stew. Okay, chicken casserole. It's a lot. There's a lot of broth in it, and of course, pieces of chicken in it. And you basically douse the sauce on uh, rice. All right, you basically drown the rice with the sauce with the broth. Okay, and then you take pieces of chicken in it and eat with it. Right, it's very delicious. Isn't that right, Elwin? Right. Yes, that is right. Yeah, I know. I I've been. Yeah, it brings back so much memories when every time I cook this dish. Really, don't cry, it. Kaljin. It's okay. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm trying not to cry, man. <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, I, I can tell you all about grandma's stories later. Okay, let's get to cooking right now. All right, let's cook, Elwin. Let's cook. So first, you got a tomato. The first recipe, uh, the first uh, ingredient that you need is a tomato, right? So how do you cut a tomato? As it, first of all, of course, rinse the tomato okay rinse it rinse it well because most tomatoes these days they have a lot of pesticide on it and you of course do not want to be ingesting that so i have already minced uh rinsed this very thoroughly so it is clean next you see this right here yeah this center part of the tomato okay very ugly this is not something that you want to eat right so what do we do so hold your knife properly okay use the point of the knife okay you just simply make small insertions like so. Okay, so small insertions, done. And then now after that, after you cut, basically carve a hole like that, you just, you can pry, you can pry it out, just like so, very easy, okay? It's out, just like so. And now you've got a clean tomato, ta-da, okay, easy. All right, first step done. Next, of course, half, half your tomato, okay? Cut it in half. And after that, we're gonna cut it into slices. So just, just cut it into fine slices, okay? Because the thing about a tomato is that later you're not gonna eat chunks of the tomato because later we're gonna boil it. And after you boil it, it's gonna disintegrate into the broth. Absolutely. So yeah, you just cut it uh, fine, okay? Into fine slices, right? Just like so. And yeah, this, don't, don't try not to cut it uh, too big so that it can disintegrate properly. There you go, tomatoes done, okay? Next. 
Ah, this the enemy, the enemy of many cooks at home. The onion. Okay, <laughs> the onion. Now tell me, Elvin, what happens when we cut an onion? It's okay to cry, everyone. It's okay. <laughs> yes, that is very true. It is okay to cry. Okay, but uh, there are ways on how to keep yourself from crying when cutting an onion. Okay, but first of all, we of course have to remove the onion skin. How do we remove the onion skin? Very easy. Top part of the onion, off, boom. And then you got the, you see the roots here, very dirty, a lot of dirt. You don't want to eat that, so it has to go. Okay, throw this into the sink. You can, uh, yeah, you can. Uh, Clean them later, okay? So now, what do we do with this? Uh, basically, what you do to keep yourself from crying is you rinse the onion, okay? You rinse it thoroughly. Uh, this is a method that my mom told me, okay? Taught me it does work. I don't know exactly what the science behind it is, but apparently rinsing your onion thoroughly and then quickly cutting it, yeah, it does work. So that's what I'm going to do right now. The thing is behind me. I'm going to quickly rinse it. At the same time I'm rinsing it, I'm going to quickly peel off the skin because you know you don't want to eat your onion skin. That's uh, it's not edible. Elwin, tell me what is your experience with onions? Is it emotional? Is it happy? Uh, it's okay. I don't experience with onions. I hate onions. I see onions. But then you know, I let my parents you know, do it. In, you know, in one of the you know what is that show? Uh? I forgot. I think it was, uh, you know, it's not a Disney show. In one of the cartoon shows, they someone said like, some like ogres are like onions. They have layers upon layers. I, 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 but basically what I'm trying to say is that onions help you understand yourself better in yes, some, yes. Heart, some you way. You peel one layer by one layer. Yeah. Okay. And then you <laughs> find what is good in the middle. Yeah, that's so, yeah, that's true. What truly matters is in the middle. Anyways. All right, so I have rinsed the onion already. The, the clock is ticking, okay? Because, again, if you don't cut it uh, quickly, the effects are going to come back, and then, yeah, you're going to cry again. So let me cut this quickly now, okay? Down halfway. And, again, your onions, cut them finely, okay? Because later you're going to boil them, and you want them to cook all the way through very easily. Okay, there you go. Cut them finely. Okay, easy. Uh, and the thing about onions is that later, later you want to uh how to say separate their peels, yeah, separate them, okay, just like so, okay. Gonna separate them so that they can cook evenly. Or you can also use a spatula to uh, separate them in the pan later, which is what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to move my camera, okay. I'm going to move my camera here. Okay, yeah, there you go. Now. Tell me, my, uh, my friends of Malaysia, what is this? This is something from Uncle Roger, I think. A weapon. Uzziah says a weapon. Okay. <laughs> a walk. There you go. Yes, a walk. Then very oh good. Oh, my God. Yeah. Every one of you are smart here. Yes, very good. A walk. Okay, this is basically every Asian household, Chinese household's best friend right here. A walk. Okay. Very good. It's a very good walk. I've been using it for a long time. All right. So now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to first put my onions in. Put my onions in. But I'm not going to put my tomatoes in first. Why is that? Uh, Elwin, could you tell me why I don't put my tomatoes in? Yes? Uh, there's C4 inside your wok. Sorry? There's a C4 inside your wok. A C4 inside your wok. A bomb. A C4, oh no. <laughs> no, 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 Alvin. But uh, you see, onions cook far longer than tomatoes, all right? So I do not want to overcook my onion. I do not want to burn my onion. So that's why I choose to put my onions in first, okay? And then later I'm going to, but uh, later I'm going to put my tomatoes in, all right? So that's, that's why. Uh, so right now, let me go and grab my spatula, which is right there, okay? And we can start cooking. So right now I'm going to use my spatula uh, to separate the onion pieces just like so. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bend on them. Okay, I'm just gonna do this motion, cons continuously heat on them. Okay, until they separate. 
into uh, slices, fine slices, the, the fine layers which they are. There you go. Easy. Okay. Now, Elvin, how do I know when I can put my tomatoes back in? Uh, when the onions are ready. When the onions are, oh, wow. Whoa, Elwin, that's a great answer. Of course, and the onions are ready. But how do I know when the onions are ready? Okay, look, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the best tips I'm going to give you in cooking, okay? When you cook, you are going to use all of your senses. You're going to use your hearing. You're going to use your smell. You're going to use your taste, your touch. And that's four, right? What, what's, the, what's the fifth one, right, Elwin? Vision, vision. Ah, uh, yes, vision, sight. Yes, you're gonna have to see. Okay, you're gonna use all five of your senses in order to, in order to make the perfect dish. Okay, yeah. So that's why. So what sense I'm going to use right now? I'm actually going to use my sense of smell. Okay, when the when the onions are ready to are ready. Okay, they will tell me. Oh, Kelgin. Yes. Okay, we can invite the tomatoes now. Okay, very nice. Okay, when it is ready, you will we will smell you will smell the fragrance, the uh, charred fragrance of the onion. Yes, I don't know how to describe the fragrance. It's some sort of oniony, but then like charcoal flavor. But I can assure you, it's not burnt. Don't worry. Okay, but yeah, that's how yeah that's how you know. Okay, now yes, as you can, I don't know if you can hear it, but yes, the onions right now are sizzling inside the wok. Very, the smell is coming out already. Very nice. Yeah. Okay, and right now, right now I'm just going to add in my tomatoes, okay? Done. So when you add in the tomatoes, when you add in the tomatoes, make sure to use your spatula, okay? Press them down, okay, onto the surface of the wok. Make sure they make contact with the heat so that they can cook. And what you're doing now, you're gonna, you're gonna keep stirring them, okay? You're gonna stir them, and why do we stir them, Elwin? Well, basically, cooking is like it's a bit like chemistry, you know. You got you got plenty, you got plenty of ingredients, okay? And those ingredients are like are like two new people, you know, like it's like me and you, Elwin, right? When we first meet each other, we don't yes. know each other, okay? And then we need to with some people, you know, the teachers need to push us around in order to uh for us to mingle with each other, get to know each other. And then yes. after that, yeah, we can create a strong bond like you and me. Just, just yes. like right, yeah, with cooking of is of course, of course. Yes, cooking, cooking really is like uh chemistry. It's 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 also a bit like making friends. You need to make force your ingredients to make a friend. That's right, Taru. A covalent yes. bond. That's right. That's right. There you go. Yeah, there you go, Taru. Ionic bond, covalent bond, whatever. Yes, very the friendship, guys. Friendship. Yes, the friendship yeah, bond, friendship. guys. Friendship yeah. bond. Yeah. You know, you know what they say, right? The what the best part of the journey is not the end, but it is the friends that we made along the way. Aha, yeah. Clap, right? guys, everyone yeah. clap, clap. <laughs> All right. So now, okay, as you can see, my onions are getting a bit charred already. The fragrance of the tomato and the onion are already mixing together. Okay, very nice. What's that? Oh, yes, they are inviting the water to go in right now. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So, right, so we have here, I got this whole uh, what is, bowl of water, big bowl of water. Okay, usually this is what I'm going to use, the amount I'm going to use. Uh, I don't really measure my ingredients because I have cooking. I have been cooking for so long. But yeah, roughly this volume of water would, would do. Okay, so I'm just going to pour it in. Right, there you go. Pour the water in. Okay, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna keep mixing again because again, you want the flavors to blend. You want the flavors to know each other. You want to develop something unique from the onions and the tomatoes. Isn't that right, Elvin? Yes, takes time, guys. Takes time. Yes, yes. Just like everything else in life, takes time. Cooking, yes. cooking sometimes is like a reflection of life. You know, you can. You, there's a lot of uh, mirroring scenarios in cooking that. Yeah, you can find in life just like this one, you know. As yes, the top, patient is the key of patient. success in life, everyone. Yes, yes, patient. Very, very true, very true. Now, I'm going to start to add my seasoning here. So, what type of seasoning I'm going to add? Well, I'm going to introduce you to one of my most favorite ingredients. 
Tada, the soy sauce, okay? The Chinese soy sauce, right? This is the uh, ingredient which I have used for most of my dishes, okay? Every single dish, I probably use soy sauce, okay? Besides from Western dishes, of course. But every single Asian dish, yes, soy sauce is the way to go, okay? This, is, this message is not sponsored, okay? But yeah, soy sauce, the way to go. So again, I don't really measure. I don't really measure, okay? But usually when I'm cooking this, I will... Uh, how to say, go four rounds of soy sauce. So what do I mean by four rounds of soy sauce? Let me show you. Okay. So one, okay, that's one round, two round, three and four, then. Okay, that's, that's how I measure, all right? Four rounds of soy sauce. And you will know that you have properly seasoned your soup or your, what do you call this? Your, uh, yeah, your broth, okay? When uh, the color is a bit of reddish brown, okay? When you have a bit of reddish brown color inside the broth, yeah, that means that you have basically properly seasoned your broth and, and that's it. Now what we're gonna do, I have this massive lid, I have this massive lid right here, okay? And I'm going to cover the lid, just like so. And I'm going to let it boil for around 15, 10 to 15 minutes, all right? So if you have time, do let it go to around 20 minutes if you allow the flavors to develop even more. But if you are in a rush, 15 minutes should do. But of course, I'm not going to just sit here for 15 minutes. You, I see you, you see me like that. No, of course not. I'm not going to torture you like that. Right, Alvin? This is a talk, not a yes, sitting. It's a talk yeah. where yeah. we enjoy the communication. Yes, yes. It's not a knowledge. So instead, so instead of sitting in silence right now, I am happy to answer any questions that you guys have. You know, uh, so if you have any questions, yeah, go ahead. You can, uh, you can uh, ask me right now. Throw us a, with a questions, question. guys. Throw us with questions. Yeah, throw us with questions. We are very oh, fear of fire. Sorry. Don't don't cook, bro. Don't cook. How do I overcome my fear of fire? Whoa, okay. <laughs> Whoa, first question so deep already. Okay, uh, how do I overcome my fear of fire? So, how do you how do you overcome your fear of fire? I would say this um, take the necessary safety precautions. Okay, um, first of all, if you are really of if you are sometimes we are afraid of the fire because of the heat, right? So, if, if this is your first time cooking, I would say, uh, use gloves, all right, use gloves. Uh, use meter. Where lab, lab coat, lab coat. Yeah, where where your uh, what do you call this? Yeah, we we don't call it a lab coat. We got apron. Yes, wear your apron. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, that would be of course very helpful. And as long as you don't put too high of a yeah, don't don't set the fire too high first time. Yeah, you, you should be good. You can do it step by step. For example, today I just want to try and put an egg. So let me set the fire at the lowest setting possible. And next time, maybe I want to try and boil something. Maybe I want to try and uh, make soup. Yeah, so I set it to the medium or to the higher settings. There you go. You can go step by step. Again, cooking ex is an experience for you to uh, absorb, for you to enjoy. Yes. So don't force yourself. But it's a journey. Yes, it's you need a journey. to walk through it. It's a journey. It takes time. Yes. Okay. Next question from PG Teriko Ukida. What is the volume of water needed? The volume Jean, may you answer this question? Volume of water needed. <laughs> okay. So basically, I use this to measure. But let's say if you are cooking for 400 or uh, sorry, not 400, sorry, not 400, uh, four people. Yeah. Around four people, which is the size of my family. Uh, then, then you should use around like maybe 500 milliliter because later your water is going to evaporate, which is already happening now. Okay. It's so going to evaporate and it will decrease in the volume. And then by then, you have a really concentrated and flavorful broth it is nice yeah. there you go there you go if you don't have this bowl get one okay <laughs> get one yeah okay, elvin let's answer one more question and then we move on okay okay sure hmm whose question to pick uh, anyone anyone uh, Singran, any i see question? one Singran, i see run uh what do you mm. like to do while cooking uh when cooking something that is really long uh like that takes one hour and a half or one hour in general, I would like to put on some music while cooking. It's perfectly, you know, it's perfectly fine. Um, you, as long as one of your ear is you, uh, how to say? Because I like to use headphones. Okay, I like to use headphones. 
but I had when cooking because I did say that we need all five sensors, right? So what I do is that I remove one of the uh I, I make sure that one of the, one of my ears is uh available to listen to the surroundings. So yeah, that's uh that will help. So but yeah, generally listening to music does cue the time, the waiting time. Okay, so yes. yeah, enjoyable. To me, I'll go take a uh, sorry inappropriate. I'll go uh you know and play my game first. Yes, I'll <laughs> go play my game first. Okay, one um, more question by Jenny. She asks, Elvin, what is your signature dish? I can cook whatever you want, bro. Whoa, that's a, that's, that's a bold statement, huh, Elvin? <laughs> yeah. All I'm right, Michelin guys. five star chef, guys. Yeah, I, I trust I trust that as well. All right, guys, but we have to move on already. Okay. Yes. So this yes has been boiling. Okay. Now I'm going to transfer this this broth into a separate bro, which is that right behind me. So yeah, let me do that now. <laughs> okay, bear, bear with me for a second, guys. Let me uh, pour the broth. Okay, nice. Done. We're done. Okay. So now I'm going to place the hot the pan on the hot surface again. Okay. And I'm going to make sure all water is evaporated. Uh, and that's because I'm going to add oil. Now, Elwin, tell me why I must wait for the water to evaporate before adding oil. Because there will be an explosion. Yeah, yeah, basically that's true. There will be an explosion. Now, don't worry, the explosion is not something like in, in a Hollywood movie. It's not going to boom, like entire house. No, 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 it's not going to be like that. But what will happen is the oil is going to pop out from the pan, from the wok, and then stain all of your skin, okay? Yeah, stain all of your skin, and then it's hot, okay? So it's going to leave blisters, it's going to burn your hand, your skin. Yeah, very, uh, it's not a pleasant feeling. It's not a pleasant feeling, okay? So yeah, make sure to, in order to reduce that, make sure to uh, that your pan or your wok is basically uh, waterless, okay? Which is like this. Now, I also need to make sure that my wok is hot enough. How do I know my wok is hot enough? I do not know if my camera can capture it here. I think it can capture a little bit, but you see, even though there's no water in there, my wok is smoking. If you see that smoking, yeah, that means that it is hot enough. Another method is to use your hand, but again, this is for like people who are not afraid of heat anymore. But you see your palm here, okay? You put your palm, uh, into the wok, into the pan, okay? But do not, of course, press it onto the surface of the pan, all right? And if you can feel the heat from a distance, that means your uh, your wok is hot enough already. And you can yes, start- This action is not for Jenny. Yeah, 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 true, true. That's also very true. Yeah, so Jen, uh, you know, this is how you have uh, proper, what do you call that? Precautions, precautions, all right? Okay, so now I'm going to add my extra virgin olive oil. Okay, my olive oil right here. I'm also going to turn down the heat, okay, because I do not want my next ingredient to burn on impact. And in case you're wondering what my next ingredient is, tada, of course, the chicken. You cannot have chicken stew or chicken casserole without obviously the chicken, right? So, uh, as you can see, my chicken here is submerged in sauce of liquid. Now, that is a marinade, okay? I have marinated my chicken. Uh, feel like one night before this event. And the reason we do this is so that we can infuse even more flavor into the chicken. Very important, okay? Uh, the marinade is basically made out of oyster sauce, soy sauce, and cornstarch, all right? Now, if you can't wait for one day, at least marinate four to three hours before cooking this dish, okay? Trust me, it will make all the difference. All right, so let's start. Now, just bear in mind that uh, the oil is probably going to pop out a lot later because although I've removed all the water inside the pan, the chicken itself also has water. So yeah, just, uh, just be careful with this, all right? Okay. 
And now what we do is that we cover it up. We cover it up to reduce the oil from splashing on you. Okay, so that uh, that's again another safety measure. Now, Elvin, let me ask you this: If you realize just now, I have been putting skin side down first. Why do I put skin side down first, Elvin? Uh, because you like to do so. <laughs> well, I mean that's that's a good try, good try. But uh, basically, the oil of the chicken, okay, is all located inside the skin. Now, when you put skin side down. It basically renders the chicken oil, okay, into the pan, into and into the rest of the oil, okay, and that gives the essence of the chicken into the oil. And then when you cook with that essence, it basically creates even more flavor. So that's the idea behind it. That's why we do skin side down first, right? So I I hope that's something new for you, Elwin, Mister Five Star Michelin Chef. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to flip my chicken ready. So what are we doing here? Actually, I do not need my chicken to be fully cooked. What I'm trying to do here is develop the, what we call char or the color. Okay, we're trying to make the color. What I'm looking for is golden brown color. Okay, a golden brown color. Sometimes if you go a bit darkish, that's also fine. Okay, but yeah, at least make it golden brown. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to do. Because remember, later we are going to put this chicken into uh the broth, into the broth itself. Okay. And then I'm going to boil the chicken for another five to seven minutes. And that will basically fully cook the chicken. So right now, you don't need to focus on fully cooking the chicken, but just focus on creating the color. Because again, cooking is not just about taste, it is also about the aesthetics. Isn't that right, Elwin? Yes, you see beautiful things you'll be happy right if you are eating some ugly food would you want to eat it okay yes, maybe it's I different say, for you yes yes that that what Elvin says is really true okay remember we always eat with our eyes first so make sure your food looks aesthetically beautiful now my chicken is already brown enough i like this so what i'm going to do I'm going to pour the broth back right in. Okay, I'm going to pour the broth, broth back right in. I'm going to stir it, okay? Let the broth make sure, meet and understand and make friends with the chicken. Okay, there you go. And I'm going to cover it and set it to around... Yeah, five five to seven minutes. So now as this, boys, make sure I, I have a few notices that I must tell you. First of all, make sure to keep your chicken, your kitchen counter clean. Okay, every time after you finish cooking, make sure, please, please, please do make sure to wipe the surfaces. Make sure there's no oil. Okay, make sure it's uh, shiny. It is clean so that your next cook will be hygienic and even tastier. All right, very, very important. Um, how about, how about you, Elwin? Any special advice that you must give? Any special advice? Yeah. Mm. Cook what you like, guys. Cook what you like. And cook what you know. Don't waste food. Food is very... True. Food ingredients nowadays are very expensive. Yeah, that is very true. Inflation is real, guys. Inflation is real. Okay. <laughs> but um, if you want to learn new dishes, that's totally fine. Uh, but I suggest you can start with your parents, maybe. Okay, your grandma, your mother, I'm pretty sure they can cook some stuff. Okay, so you can start to learn from them. And after that, as you become more adventurous, yeah, you can learn from online, like what Elwin, uh, what Elwin did and what I did. Okay. So, yes, and one advice from Terrico is very valuable. He said, don't burn the house down. Yes, of course. Yes, very, very That's true. That's very, very good advice, Teru. Very good advice. Say that, that to is... yourself, Teru. <laughs> yes, that, that is very true, Teru. Yes. Uh. Oh, okay. I have a, a question from Jenny. Uh, do I prefer baking or cooking? Yeah, I prefer cooking more, Jenny, because uh, baking, not really my forte. I have not tried so many baking recipes yet, but who knows? Maybe maybe in the future, uh, I will do some stuff. How about you, Alvin? I prefer eating. Eating. Uh, <laughs> yes, I also prefer eating. Yes, that's yes, very true. But of course, as they say, you need to put in the work first 
before you can uh, get the fruits of your labor. Yes. Yes, Elwin, don't leave me hanging, man. Of course, of course, of course. Sorry, my uh, bad. My bad my <laughs> there bad, you go. Bad, okay, you, you hear? Okay, you hear? Okay, good, good, good. All right, guys, this is the final step of my dish, all right? Final step of my dish, as you can see, the smell is fabulous. Okay, yes, very wonderful, okay? And now this is the last chance to uh, to season, to properly season your food, okay? If you feel that your food is it needs a bit more salt, you want it a bit saltier, add soy sauce. But that's not what I'm going to do because actually I like it a bit sweeter. So let me introduce to you my second favorite seasoning. This is called rock candy, okay? Rock candy, all right? Uh, it is a natural candy. Um, it is safe to consume. I know what it looks like. It's not, okay? It is just basically rock candy. It is sweet. Yeah, glucose. Oh, yeah, glucose, okay? <laughs> so what I do is that I like to add uh, rocks, uh, basically around three pieces, three, three pieces of this candy into the broth, okay? And then I stir it. I will stir it to like, make sure all the mixtures are uh, mixed together, okay? And yeah, and then I'm going to cover it up for it to boil, to come to a boil. There you go. Right. So, Alvin, are you? Yes. Are you? Uh, how? What? Is, what are the words to describe this? Excited, excited. There's no word. There's no word to describe this. Yeah. It's just too fabulous and fantastic. <laughs> yes, I must agree. Now I can tell you my grandma and grandpa stories. I you I remember actually my grandma is the one that introduced this dish to me. Okay. Um when I was a little kid, eight years old, okay. Eight years old, she cooked this dish for me. Okay. Uh, every time when I came back from primary school, standard two, starting standard two, yeah, this dish would be right at the doorstep, right there, with a bowl of rice. And then I will just douse the rice with it and then I'll just eat it every single day, literally every single day for probably, yeah, for five years, for five years, she has fed me like that, literally every single day. So this dish does mean a lot of me. And this is the beauty of cooking, guys. It brings back memories, you know, every time I cook this dish, it reminds me of my grandma and it makes me proud that I am able to carry her recipe today. So yeah, it's a very heartwarming story. Uh, how yes, about my you? tears are falling off from my mouth? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> how about how about you, Alvin? Any any like memorable cooking stories that you have? Uh no. Really? Yeah. My cooking journey is very simple. It's just cook and eat, cook and eat. Oh, and also washing all those things is something you would never want to do. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, of course, yes. I also hate the process of cleaning, but it is what it is. But it's yes. okay, Alvin. Although you had a simple journey, you have me now, right? Your new cooking. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Glad to and, have you. Yeah. Glad to have you. Yes, yes, of course. And glad to have you as well, Alvin. Anyways, this is five minutes has uh, passed and this is done. And let me now show you the fruits of our labor. I hereby, ladies and gentlemen, I hereby introduce to you Popo chicken. Ta -da. Ta -da, oh my god. My saliva is coming out of my mouth. Can you see it, Elvin? Yes, it looks fantastic. Okay. There you go. That's the dish that which I have been eating for probably the first decade of my life already. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so uh, that, that is popo chicken. That is popo chicken, ladies and gentlemen. All right, and that comes to the end of our cooking demo. Okay, I hope that you have learned a lot of new things from this because I know Elwin definitely has, right, Elwin? Yes, of course. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we learn from each other basically, and I hope with this newfound knowledge about popo chicken, you will go spread my grandma's love and cook for yourself and your family as well, okay? Because everyone deserves to eat this because it's magnificent, 
as the French would say. Okay. <laughs> All right. And with that being said, thank you. And I shall now pass the mic to our beloved MC, Miss Jasindra. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kaljin. That's a great sharing, Kaljin and Elvin. That was a truly an inspiring presentation. Dear audience, we would like now uh, to invite you to post your questions in our chat box for our presenters to address in the upcoming Q&A session. We would like to open the floor to our audiences for your questions. Who would like to ask the first question? I see a few questions. We have a few questions. Right, I am back. Uh, sorry for that. I had to clean up some stuff. Okay. Oh, there's one question from Jenny. Are there any particular brands of ingredients you like? Any particular brands of ingredients that I like? Uh, well, not for vegetables, because I do believe mm. vegetables... Now, we take biology, so we know a tomato is a tomato, and a cucumber is a cucumber. Right? Yes, um, yes. The only difference is maybe sus subspecies, right, Miss India? Our uh, she's a former bio teacher, right? Maybe subspecies might be a bit different, okay. But if you do get from your same from the same local area, yeah, I should, uh, again, tomato is a tomato, and apple is an apple, banana is a banana. So natural so, selection, natural selection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So shouldn't be much issue there. In terms of uh, soy sauce, though, yeah, I do like this brand of soy sauce. My which my mother likes uh, as well. Always buys Lee. Li Kum Ki soy sauce, this one. Uh, let me let me put it to the surf. Yeah, there you go. My camera. Okay. Li Kum Ki. So this is the soy sauce brand which I always use. Uh other than that, yeah, that's that's the only preferred brand. I don't really have much uh yeah particulars on brands. That's it. Okay, next there's one uh question by Uzziah. If you two were to make a restaurant, how much per dish on average? Oh, whoa, whoa, okay. mm, 1K. one K, <laughs> one, yeah, because we are opening Michelin star restaurant. Yes, yes, yes. yes. five star, Ooh. man, five, five star. star. We got don't five need stars. it for free. Yes, yes, five star uh, chef right there. So yes, it's I think that sounds reasonable. Okay, I'll win. Next question, please. Uh, Teruhiko Ukida from Penang Campus. Does the walk matters when cooking? What do you think? What do you think, Teru? Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe Kaljin, you answer his question. Uh, okay. Um, actually, no, it does not matter. Although, if you don't use a wok, you probably will have to use a lot more pans. Okay, a, a lot more pots and pans because you need a you need a pot to cook the broth because you can't cook the broth the broth in a pan, right? Because a, a pan is a flat surface. But you also need the pan to cook the chicken to char and color the chicken. Because you can't cook the chicken inside the pot because, because of the limited surface area down there. Okay, it's not going to be convenient. So that's why I use a wok. A wok is wide enough. Okay, it's wide enough. You can cook the broth inside and you can also cook the chicken inside all in one. Okay, and later when I clean, all I have to do is clean the wok. That's it. I don't need to cook. I don't need to. Fantastic. Clean. Yeah, I don't need to clean a pot and a pan. Then that's, that's why I use a wok. Yes. And next. What seasoning do you use to marinate the chicken? Ah, yes. Ah, I use secret water. recipe. Uh, yes, secret recipe. I use soy sauce. Soy sauce, this thing. Uh, soy sauce. I Pepper? use I use Slim Kum Ki's uh, oyster sauce. This panda logo in Malaysia, very famous oyster sauce. And I also use uh, this one, uh, cornstarch. Okay, this is cornstarch. There you go. So... Uh, yeah, so mix those two into the chicken, okay? And then get your hands inside in cooking, okay? Don't be afraid of getting your hands dirty because that's basically cooking, okay? So get your hands inside the chicken, okay? Make sure you coat the chicken with all of the marinade. And there you go. That's And then, yeah, you let it set there in, say, inside your fridge for three to four hours and then take it out and cook it. Next question. Or... Uh... From okay, from Singran, what are the common dishes that you both like to cook from time to time? Mm, uh, maybe you first, Kajin, you first. 
But obviously, I already answered my question. I, I like popo chicken. Every time I cook, it's usually popo chicken. I also cook another dish called lion head. Uh, it's not an actual lion head, but it's more of a pork fish, uh, pork ball. Yeah, pork ball. So yeah, I have to make the balls, the meat balls, and then uh, put them in the broth to cook. Yeah, but those are the two most common dishes I make. Uh, how about you, Alvin? Uh, to me, uh, my most favorite dish is actually uh Chinese food. So I often cook uh Sichuan stir fried cabbage. Yes, and both me and my parents love it. So yeah, that's my signature dish, my five star Michelin dish. Yes, five star Michelin dish. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uzayas asks, would a Swiss, Swiss army knife help in cooking? Um, probably not because Swiss army knife, you, the blade is very small. If you have access to a knife, just use a knife. It's much more easier, much more effective. I will only recommend that if you are in a jungle, okay, and you have nothing else but that Swiss army knife, yeah, then of course use that by all means, we will go ahead. But if you are in a kitchen environment, just use a knife, much more easier, right? Next question from Cadence Lim, Penang Campus. How long does it take for you to cook on average? How long does it take for me to cook on average so you mean average per like the time for dishes is that is that what you're asking yeah i think so for dishes yes i think so yes she said yes okay that um i won't say that's a real average there because it varies very much from dish to dish right alvin is it the same case for you mm, to me uh, we have to see how long does the step takes and yeah, but should be similar, should be similar. Yeah. Like for example, if I cook this chicken, it's going to be in total, including the cleaning process, everything is the fastest will be one hour, 30 minutes. But let's say you, my mother asked me, Hey, Kaljin, go and make me a half boy egg. Then that's going to take at most 15 minutes. That's it. So again, it varies a lot from the dish. Uh, it, you have to take into account the complexity of the dish. Yeah, so that, that's what it is what I would say. All right. Elvin, how about this? We answer one more question, Elvin. Okay, of course, sure. Okay, there's one question from Elisa Biology. This question is very biological, where she asks, how do you prevent loss of nutrients in your food when cooking? Oh, mm. wow. Oh, okay. Uh, Miss Cynthia, would you like to help us? <laughs> Miss Cynthia. <laughs> I don't think I'm in a mood of answering bio right now. Um, Okay, let me think. Because I... You, your voice can attempt to answer first. Sorry, teacher? <laughs> Kaojin, you first. You can attempt you to answer first. first. Kaojin. Okay, okay. I, I know try, you can I, do uh, this. I believe in you. Okay, I try lah. Huh? Prevent loss of nutrients in cooking. Okay, this is what I heard. Um... Some certain vegetables, okay, if you boil them too long, they are going to lose some nutrients. And one of them is uh, broccoli, okay? Broccoli is best eaten when raw, but of course, people do not like to eat it raw, okay? But then most of it nutrients will be preserved if you have it uh, raw. So what we do, okay, you don't want to eat it raw, but then you don't want to overcook it as well. So what you do, you boil the water, okay? And then you take broccoli, okay? And then you rinse it with the water. You rinse it with the boiling water. So that cooks it, slightly cooks it, okay? Makes it much more uh, ingestible, okay? While you also maintain more of the nutrients. So that's one of the examples that I can think from the top of my head. Uh, secondly, you may not be able to preserve all of the nutrients in the food. For example, chicken. Every time I cook the chicken with oil, everything, it of course changes the nutrients. But uh, what you can do is you can add more nutrients to it. For example, the marination, which I did. You can always add herbs if you're cooking Western food. Okay, rosemary, thyme, all of those stuff. You can add more vitamins and minerals into the chicken and that will make it healthier. All right, so that's, what, uh, that's my answer. Fabulous answer. I, of course, I got seven for bio, of course. <laughs> oh, smart student, smart student. Something that I cannot answer, you know, something I cannot answer. That's a very good criteria, D, real life question that relates biology with cooking or even chemistry with cooking. It's so fantastic. True, true. Um, next time you guys have your exam questions in bio or chemistry, that question's coming up. Yeah? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> No thanks, no thanks. Oh, okay. 
All right. <laughs> uh, Jenny is like, no, don't give Ivy any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> what if we go one more question, Kaljin? One more, uh, just one more, one last okay, one. Okay, okay. All right, let's let's do one more before we end this session. Hi, you, Noris Banwadzi, my favorite teacher in Fairview Penang campus. <laughs> he asks, who is a better chef or cook between you two? Let's start a fight, Kaljin. You answer this first. I'll let you answer Let's start a fight, Kaljin. No. Let's fight, Kaljin. Okay, sure. PD cam, PD cam, we determine who is the better cook. Yes, yes. I'll say first, I think it's me. I'll win. <laughs> Okay, sure. I'll, 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 I'll make a bet with you. All right. We, we set the days in PD camp to be determined. Okay. The okay. answer for now is to be determined. All right. Let's not make Miss Cynthia see this. Okay. Because we will both <laughs> get a blue letter. PD camp, the two of you are having a cook off witnessed by the whole of M5. <laughs> All right. Can, <laughs> can, can, can. <laughs> okay. Right. Fantastic, boys. Looking forward to that. Okay. Um, I think it's already 6.05. Um, um, thank you so much for participating in the question and answer um, sessions, everyone. I think our MC, Ms. Jacindra, has a few words from our organizers that she would like to share. And please stay until the end because we would like to have a photo, um, a Zoom photo with every one of our participants and our guests today. So Ms. Jacindra, back to you. All right. Thank you, Miss Cynthia. Okay, I must say, Kaljin and Elvin, what a talk. So both of you have shown true dedication in continuously developing your amazing talents independently to make your own free choices. You are true living up to the IB learner profile of being balanced and courageous. In other words, you are trying new things that will bring joy in your lives. I hope the audience take a leap out of their well-written research and apply in their lives as you have. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a thumbs up if you agree with me. Thank you so much for your support, dear audience. In fact, that students here at Fabry International School learn multiple skills, not just academically, but also enhancing what they are good at to enjoy their learning journey. Okay, so... Next, please allow me to brief on some information about the organizer for today's talk. Paris International School is the top IB school in Malaysia. The school has won multiple awards, including the International Award in Teaching and Learning. The five star are a quality assurance titled by the Malaysian government. Fabian is also one of the member of the Council of International Schools. CIS. Fabian International School is the only top school in Malaysia to win a A top Nobel ID school three years in a row for the year 2020, 2021, and 2022. At Fabian, we believe our success is a result of our uniqueness through our ID pedagogy. Our future proof at five U International School Series of Event and the Everyone Film Musician Program. Feel free to contact us through the different channels displayed on the screen, or we would love to love you to be part of our Fairview community. Please like and leave your comments in our Fairview International School Facebook page, along with Kaljin and Elvin's poster. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining yeah. us. Mr. Sindra, may Before I Before that, it? can I have everyone's uh, camera on? Oh. And then Kelchin has a special um word yeah. or two to share with all of us here. So let's begin by cameras on. Yeah, so... I see I seen, um, familiar faces. And oh, I yeah. see my previous Breakthrough Talk speaker. <laughs> Jenny, are you driving? I, I think she's being driven. Yeah, I got blessed like five minutes ago. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm, I'm in the car. <laughs> You're so funny, dear. So I'm such a good friend that I had to take the Zoom call in the car. I'm such a great friend. Well, I'm so yeah. I'm so flattered, Jenny. Thank you. Okay, so let's just do um any freestyle P signs or whatnot, and I will print screen. 
Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, thank you. Let me save that. And then I will share it with our speakers. So, okay, over to you, Kaljin. Um, he right. would like to say a word or two to all of us here. All right. So, um, first of all, uh, I have always, uh, like every time I go into a few breakthrough talks, okay, my uh, other few past breakthrough talks, I have always seen some new faces. There will always be new faces from other campuses. Um, and they will also be returning faces as well. Like my friends from SJ, maybe a person from JB, you know. But yeah, um, so it's already heartwarming to see this journey. And because like I remember from, I, 